Good morning! It is an absolutely ordinary day here in Gothenburg and today you and I are going to compare Elixir and Go or Golang, whichever flavor of the term you like to use. I like to say, call it Go. The blue little nice gopher, like it's the weirdest and yet most appealing logo of any programming language. I like it. Anywho. So to compare these two languages, you will have to, you know, kind of bear with me a little bit because comparing Elixir and Go is very much, in many, in many senses, a comparison between oranges and apples, basically. Why is that? Well, because Elixir is designed to be a web-based solution. Basically, it's optimized to solve problems that involves network traffic or anything like that, you know, different uh, it, it, TCP and HTTP connections and all that good stuff. Now, Go can do that easily. It can do it just as well as any other programming language, but Go is also a system level language, which means that it has access to memory manipulations and pointers and all that low level, powerful, very powerful low level stuff, right? So that's something that was not really the intention of Elixir, I'm going to be honest and say I don't actually know if you can do that in, in Elixir. I don't think you can. I've never heard anybody talk about it, but uh, that's the way it is. So we have to have this discussion on an equal playing field. We have to compare these languages for the intended purposes. So that means that, you know, if you're looking to do system level language stuff, then you should go with Go. Go will win immediately because it can do something that Elixir is not really meant to be doing. But in a fair comparison, we're going to compare them in the context of, you know, making web applications. Because, hey, most of the stuff that you're going to build is web applications. It's like 90% of everything that's being built in the programming world. So might as well talk about it, right? And in that comparison, let's start off by the things that I really like about these two awesome languages, because these are awesome languages. Comparing these two languages to me is, it's like, it's like, the, I, I think I made a video about Go and No. This is the same problem. This is like asking a father, which of your kids do you love most? That's how I feel about it. I know it's weird, but I really love programming, so I get a bit weird about it. And that's exactly how it feels. So. Elixir is hands down one of my favorite programs. Like it, it is so great. It is so amazing. I've only heard people say nice things about it when they actually sat down, learned the principles behind functional programming and the way that Elixir works. And I had a viewer the other day who was commenting on an Elixir video I made, which it was just really inspiring. He was basically saying that he was running Vue.js, GraphQL, and Elixir. And that is like almost, in my opinion, like that's almost a perfect stack. That is like the, like yeah, the, the, the most modern forward thinking thing I can imagine having on your, as a part of your stack. And he had great experiences with it. And that's usually the case for people who are, who are going with Elixir. And it's the case for me as well. Like when I first started with Elixir, I was a little bit like, all right, I'll try it because, you know, I like trying different programming languages. And I sat down with it. I went to exorcism.com. You should absolutely check out exorcism.com where like, they had some code challenges and I learned how to use Elixir to solve certain problems. And when like things such as pattern matching started clicking for me and I realized how processes worked under the hood, I start, it's kind of, it, I had this like penny drop in my head and I realized wow, this is really powerful. Like this technology, I st and I still believe that, that this is the case. I still say that, you know, if you're going to build a really large system that is going to scale, most likely, and I, I honestly believe, I can't back this up because I haven't had the opportunity to work at that scale. But my, uh, all, uh, everything that I can see about this technology indicates that it might actually scale, I, Elixir may actually scale better than what we are doing today with Docker and Kubernetes. I'm not going to promise that, but from everything I've read about it and everything I've, all the people who've been, I've been talking to, 
it seems to be the case because it combines this amazing monolithic structure because like let's be honest like i know monolith is like a it's a bad word in the programming world at least it, it is today and everything's about microservices and distributed system distributed systems and i think yeah absolutely i i'm not going to question the validity in the pro like there are problems with a monolithic application but elixir uh, or rather but but a monolithic application has more simplicity when it comes to deployment and maintenance and all of that stuff and then you know having microservices you know when you have lo a lot of different repos and so forth it gets you know you, you move complexity from a single code base to several code bases and that ha that has its own problems but elixir gives you it's like having your cake and eating it at the same time it is like quite literally like that you can have a monolithic application or you can have microservices, it depends on what you want. I would, if I were running an Elixir project, I would keep it as a monolithic application because internally the, it's going to work. Like the, the, the message distribution, message switching between the different processes is going to act just as if it was a microservice. So it scales extremely well. And of course it has Ruby behind it or the Ruby community and probably one of the nicest package manager well it's not just a package manager it does so much more mix is really nice mix is extremely nice and then let's go over to go which has a it's a system level language that is actually nice to use because c and c plus plus i love these languages it was great working in them at in school but they are they are behind the curve in so many areas and i honestly think that that has more to do with the way that that community is being managed than anything else i feel like the c and c plus uh, plus people have been in this have had this way of thinking that yeah you sh we're the oldest oldest game around why should we change why like why should we make things adoptable bjarne strosa uh, bjarne has uh, made a really nice point a while back when he said that you know if you want that if you want c and c plus plus to like get a lift in popularity you need to make it more adoptable to people and he was actually saying that you they want more javascript people into the platform because uh, javascript people generally are more interested in adoptability and like how easy is it, it is to get started with things as opposed to anything else and that's actually very healthy for a more conservative language such as, such as C and C++. So Go brings that to the table today. It gives you all the power of, of a system level language with web support like from the get-go and it's very easy to get started with. So I actually I made a video about like my favorite programming, lang programming language and Go is on that list. And it is on that list because I believe that if you are starting today from scratch, you have absolutely no prior pro programming experience, you should start with Go because it will allow you to do everything. It is the closest thing to JavaScript that we have for uh, like a, you know, a non-browser language because you know, JavaScript is, is always going to be, or not always, but it's the, it's the language of the web. So you have to learn it but JavaScript can't do everything that Go can do. So if you have to, you know, pick, if you, if you exclude JavaScript as being like one of the more fundamental languages, Go, is, in my opinion, should be your first choice because it's, it's really performant, has support for basically everything you could want, possibly want to do. And so if we compare these two languages, it gets a little bit tricky because as I said, Go can do things that Elixir can't. And the issue is that if we just focus on web and basically having, having a web application, then it becomes a performance discussion at best because Go, the only thing that Go can really, there's only really two things that Go has that speaks for it when it compares itself to Elixir. And that, in my opinion, is performance and ease of, and, uh, performance and ease of maintainability 
basically or like oh sorry no ease of maintainability and what i mean about that is basically types go has types elixir does not have types so it de kind of depends so elixir in my opinion is much better uh, it's going to be easier at scale in theory at least you're going to be able to go farther on a single monolithic application in Elixir, then you're going to be able to go and go. And odds are that maintaining your system at scale is going to be easier. That's at least the promise of Elixir. It has Erlang and the type of robustness that have, has been proven for over 30 years. So I have, I have a hard time believing that there's something more stable than, than Elixir on the market today. But Go has the performance uh, performance bit on for speaking for it unfortunately at scale go is going to require more, well it's going to be a little bit more tricky for you to maintain it i'm not saying that that's a that's a deal breaker in in any way and it has types so to me that's a very difficult comparison because you don't need types to build something great. You can build things without, without the typing system. And if I were to say that you should go with one thing over the other, and the scenarios I would describe, I would say this. If you are a seasoned programmer, you know your stuff, you've been doing this for a while, and you are supposed to build a high availability system, something that must always be running it can never go down like a medical communication system like anything that is gonna gonna have to have a really really solid uptime go with elixir every single day of the week go with elixir if you are building a smaller application if you're just starting out or if you're building your own web server or anything like that start with go definitely start with go elixir to me has it is it's a beautiful language and it's a beautiful piece of technology, but you, I argue that the strongest use case for using Elixir is when you need it to be around forever. It's the same type of mentality I have for Java. Elixir gives you stability and maintainability over time, and that's the strongest argument for it. But unless that is your requirement, I think you should go with something a little bit more accessible and Go is a little bit more accessible than Elixir. Hopefully this was helpful to you.